Hi, I'm Brennan Baker and welcome to the Pro Palette. In this foundation series video, we're going to be picking up where we left off with the first two videos um, where we were exploring everything from, um, you know, uh, paint consistency, charge, how to layer, how to create uh, foundations of like creating textures and glazes to, uh, to pretty much um, illustrate, you know, shadow, midtone, and highlights, and to create transitions on our models, um, to illustrate on our models here. In this video, we're going to be taking another approach, uh, and just another way to, um, to illustrate that, to reach that, and that is, um, a little more, uh, it's going to be a little more focused on direct shapes. So we're in the past videos, uh, we're basically going from a dark value up to a light value. In this, uh, in this approach, we'll be not going from dark to light, but rather um, painting in all the areas of highlight and then doing the opposite, then painting in the areas of shadow and then creating bridges. And in a sense, it's almost, uh, instead of just going progressively lighter, we're going to go up, we're going to go up to a mid or high value, then back to a low and then fill something in between. So it's like a skip one, go back kind of thing. And uh, we're going to unlock that process and how to do that. In the miniature that we have on here, it's, uh, you know, as I'm a big fan of just getting pieces of miniatures, especially um, learning these techniques, it's better to, um, you know, exercise and learn them in isolation. But uh, in this video, this is actually a chest plate of a Tartaros Space Marine Terminator. So it's just the front body here. Um, I've cleaned up. There was like some filigree that's in the front of the miniature. I've just completely like uh, carved and sanded that off flat just for this demonstration, just so it's a nice, easy surface to work on um, in my past videos. Um, and other things I like to practice on or everything, anything with like an easy, large, flat surface, especially if it's like your first time or your first few sessions on how to, um, you know, uh, do these techniques with your brush. It's always easier to make it on a, a simplified surface and then just progressively get more complex as you get more comfortable with it because um, in more complex shapes, it's much more of the illustration of the shape and uh, rather than just like the technique. So it's easier to master the technique first on a very simple area. So, you know, you get the, you get the flow down, uh, you get the stages on how to work with it and get the techniques, the hand technique, the, the muscle control and everything else. Then you can think about making um, more uh, creative decisions in terms of where exactly the light should be placed, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm um, taking a look into the palette window here. I have a few colors. So the first color I have here is uh, scale 75 black. So that's on the left side. Uh, the next color I have to the left is this Caspian blue. And then uh, to the right of that, of course, keep going is this Adriatic blue. <laughs> and then I just have a, uh, a good old fashioned white. Um, these are all by scale color. You do not need to use scale color for this exercise. Any acrylic uh, color paint will do. Uh, I'm just preferring to using these uh, scale colors right now because I'm really enjoying them. <laughs> now, before we just start mixing up colors, a good little thing to think about when we're doing this and uh, um, you know uh, applying this paint in the area. I've chosen these colors not only if you uh, go ahead and you start watching the Alpha Legion Praetor, these are the exact colors I use for the armor. So it's also a nice idea. You can watch this video. You can get the foundation techniques on how I am um, applying these layers. And then in the videos, you get to see it in action on a model, as well as um, you get to see how I go about illustrating the more complex shapes on here. So um, going back to the paint. So the idea here is we want to create, we want a, we basically want to lay down a highlight, a shadow and a midtone. Now, in our case, a highlight, I want to say that a highlight is anything 
anywhere on an area of the model that is directly facing towards our light source. So it's in plain view. That's going to be our highlight. Our shadows are going to be anywhere that the light um, doesn't reach directly. And uh, so hence it's be darker. The mid-tone, or we could also call it a half-tone, is a halfway step between the light and the shadow. Or more importantly, where the light starts to, or sorry, I should say, where the surface of the area starts to bend away from the area. So it starts to uh, change, in, um, change in plane or change in direction. So for instance, it's really easy, especially on curved areas. You know, our highlight is gonna be somewhere down the middle here because it's a very rounded surface. So our highlight's gonna be here. And then as the surface is bending away from us, we're gonna get a mid-tone and then it's gonna go into shadow. And uh, to help you off, of course, shadow doesn't mean completely black, <laughs> okay? Um, to help you out with like, especially with the colors and stuff, I always like to think of the two main questions I always ask myself when I'm looking at models is if I'm gonna paint armor blue, my first thought is what does this blue look like in the light? So during, so when the, you know, when he's outside or there's a light shining on him, what does that blue look like when it's lit? Then the second question I ask myself, what does my blue look like when it's not directly lit? Now, not a completely devoid of light is because, you know, light bounces all the way around. You know, there's always like, um, you know, rebounding light from the atmosphere, from, um, other models, the ground, you know, it, 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 every, anything around it, surroundings. But we can still see shadows even during the day, even if you're walking outside, you know, a person with, you know, maybe their face is partially lit from the right side from the sun, but we can still see the left side of the person's face by it, be it, it'll just be darker. That is technically a shadow because no the primary light is not hitting there directly. It's all being received by secondary lights being rebounded, but our eyes and our stuff, of course, read it as a shadow. And then the mid-tone, of course, again, or half-tone is like a halfway jump between the light and the shadow. So that's what we're gonna be creating. So with these four colors here, I'm going to start mixing a few. Um, so I like this Caspian blue and I'm thinking that could probably be our mid-tone. That kind of looks like, you know, I'm going to kind of create this as a halfway point. But to create our shadow, I'm going to take our Caspian blue and I'm just going to grab a little bit of black. And right there, I think that's pretty good. That. That will what our uh, that's what our um, our armor is gonna look like overall in the shadow. Okay, so I'm not gonna make it like super dark. Eh, why not get a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit of touch of black. And as you can see, I'm just adding water into it because of course I like to paint with thinner paint. Down here. Now I will create the mid tone. So the mid-tone, I'm gonna grab the same uh, Caspian blue and I'm gonna start taking a little bit of pinch of this uh, Adriac blue. Oh, I can never pronounce these names. This lighter blue. It looks like a Caribbean blue to me. That's what I wanna say, Caribbean blue. <laughs> and then finally, I'm gonna take this uh, Caribbean blue. I'll pretty much have it as a, a pure Caribbean blue. Add a little bit of water in there. There we go. And I'm kind of looking, I'm like, you know what? This kind of value on this side is leaning towards the shadow. So I'm going to grab a little more of the, uh, that lighter, our, our Caribbean blue. 
There we go. That kind of looks like a halfway point there. Okay. There we go. So I have those three colors down there right now. And let's just start, let's start the process on here. So first off is I'm gonna take our highlight. So this is our highlight color. Now, don't be confused with like, some people think the highlight is like an edge highlight. That is like our, that is a highlight because it's whatever layer that's on top of the previous one that's going lighter. But right now I'm just gonna take this and I'm just, all I'm gonna do is I am just going to um, paint it in the general light area. And like here, so just nice easy strokes. Nothing too complicated. There we go. So I'm kind of just giving like a, a general shape. I'm trying to keep a little bit of the round part. For this exercise, just like the other previous exercises, it's not super important exactly how you position them. We really want to get, we really want to focus on the blending area. So that's always like the first part that I'm always trying to initiate. But in terms of the, um, you know, the shape itself, this whole area is uh, facing upwards because there's an upwards facing plane. And then down here is the downwards facing plane. So we won't be painting that part. This demonstration will just be on this part here. And then I kind of want to give a little bit, I can, you know, you can be a little more, um, a, a little more uh, interest in the shape when we start going down here. And now I'm just going to apply the second one. I'm just doing horizontal strokes across. And just like with my other, like my, with my paint consistency and such, you know, I'm never, never really going to get a full coverage on, on the first pass. <laughs> Maybe, uh, and to help it out, I can do some vertical strokes just to kind of hide some of those brush marks. If you've been watching the other videos there, you'll know that if you, uh, to get a smoother surface. We can just paint 90 degrees across our previous strokes just to kind of help it out. So that's pretty good. That's almost like you, there's still a little bit of like you're seeing through because I am painting directly over black. Um, you know, you're always going to have a little bit of the previous layer showing up, but you know, there'll be future highlights are going to come up on here anyway. So you don't need to be like a hundred percent opaque. Um, and now I'm going to get the shadow color. So if this is where like my max light is, those boundaries there, because you know, I'm just viewing the model from this direction here. Now I'm going to start painting in the shadows. I'll paint in the, the shadow color on this side here. And I'm pretty much going to butt it up right against that highlight. Like that. Could actually wrap it all the way around but we only need to see one side little blow get a little bit of dry and i'll just make uh one more one more layer go 
And then if I want, I can just get a little more of this highlight just to smoothen it out a little bit more. You know, it doesn't hurt. that. Okay, now to blend the middle, this is where we're going to do like, we're going to do the bridge. So we're going to go to our mid-tone or half-tone here, and we're going to start to carve it in, and we're going to start to uh, blend and merge these two areas together. In general, what I like to do, especially for the mid-tone when I'm bridging layers, is this paint will be a little bit, uh, it, you know, it doesn't hurt to be a little bit more um, uh, thinner than your other, your previous layers. Um, you know, around like, you know, just over one to one, maybe one and a half, you know, it can be a little bit, uh, it can be a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna wipe off a lot of the, ch I don't want a ton of charge on here because we don't need to spill a lot of paint on. And we want to get our stroke something like this. So I'm gonna start stroking and I'm gonna stroke right down the middle. So I'm gonna cover the two in this one pass, so. First pass, let it dry, get some more paint. Remember, I just need very, very little paint. Don't need a lot. Now, when you first start doing this, you can make that very, fairly large. It doesn't have to be like really narrow. Um, it's easier just to do a, like a larger surface, just so, um, you know, you give yourself some, uh, you know, give yourself a lot of room for like to play, especially when doing this the first time. As soon as you get better and better, you can make it smaller and smaller. Now I've done it from left to right, ending just past into the shadow area. Now I'm gonna go the opposite direction. I'm gonna do this without flipping. So I'm gonna go backhanded. Most of the time I'd flip this model just cause it's easier, but I'll try to keep the orientation the same for you guys. <clears throat> After one layer, now I'm going to do it again, get the second layer. And this is almost like, you can almost take that same foundations from layering. So now when you have like really, really thin layers, you know, we can kind of... We can apply that same, um, that same principle of the thin layers. And you can even stop a little bit shorter to get an even nicer feather, like that. Then I can change the consistency now, so we can do a few things. I can, I can, um, we can start to see it's actually just starting to blend into there. So we have a few options. You know, we can either just massage with the, the two shadow colors and, and the mid-tone, or we can even just create a bridge. So, you know, let, let's do, let's make a bridge within a bridge. So I'm gonna grab this color here, like this. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this. Great that. I'm just gonna wipe off a lot of charge just so there's not a lot of uh, charge left on the brush. And then I'm gonna start, and then I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna put it into this, this side here. And I'm just aiming right down the, down that divide there. So I'm just covering that with that section. adding a little more water into that consistency. So now it's like a true to like two to one. Two to one 
uh, you know, consistency with a little bit of charge, not a lot. And then we can do the same thing here. Or if you don't want to, what you can do is you can do a couple of things. So if I can, if I want to make the highlight bigger, let's say I want this highlight to be larger and I, want, I don't want the mid-tone to be as big, I would grab the highlight, um, grab a secondary mixture, make it a little bit more thinner, like a two to one mixture on the side here, and then start pulling from here over here. So since if I'm going to use the highlight to blend, that's going to make the blended of the highlight area larger. But opposite would be true. If I want the mid-tone to be larger, I could either create a bridge between the two here or just use the mid-tone color and start pulling back in this way. So um, I'll, make the, I'll make the highlight bigger. Why not? Let's try making the highlight bigger. So here it is. There's a, there's a thinner mixture because I put a little bit of water on the side of the palette there. I'm going to wipe off a lot of that charge. And then go through here like like this. And again, I'm always ending my, since I'm using the highlight color, I'm ending the stroke back in the highlight. Nice, nice, uh, nice soft touch there. Remember, I'm not pushing hard on the brush at all. I'm keeping it fairly, fairly soft. Um, you know, it's almost like kind of like, again, like kind of like tickling the surface. I'll get more of the same highlight color again, that nice two to one mixture. And uh... now I can go over my previous stuff like that. And if you're having problems, you know, getting into here, we can always get back some of our mid-tone and start going on on top of everything else. So to smoothen it out here, see, we got a, pr that's a pretty like, you know, just for like only a few, like a, like a few minutes of just doing some strokes, we already have like a really, uh, really, um, a well, like built up highlight already. Like we're getting, we're getting pretty close as it is. So, um, you know, to increase our highlights, to build it up even more. Now I can just take some white. I'll take some of this blue. We'll make another pool here. Remember to get some water in there because we need that thinner paint. Remember to get rid of some of that charge. And then now when I get to the, the brighter, brighter highlights, um, you know, I'm not super, I'm not super concerned about skipping a phase and then cutting back. Now when it gets to the very, very bright highlights, um, I can just, I can layer up from here. But the nice thing is about this initial techniques is that one, it'll really help you get the shapes of highlights that you really need, especially if it's more critical to, um, make those shapes uh, uh, more detailed as well as it lets you plan out. Um, it'll let you like plan out your better highlights, especially when you're doing like uh, when I'm finding out when I want to do more um, detailed shapes in terms of directional lighting, getting those highlights directly in place is because um, uh, so much of like getting those like primary secondary lights and then doing like, you know, balance lighting and stuff will really um, it's very, very critical that your lights are in the, the correct positions. If they're not in the correct positions, the, the painting starts to look a bit wonky. And discovering by doing it this method, this helps me, uh, this helps me control that a lot more um, and get a lot more of an accurate representation onto the, onto the model. And uh, now I just made, uh, sorry, I just made on the palette there, I made a darker part. So I mix that Caspian blue and black. And you know what? I'll just paint in here like this. Mm -hmm. 
Remember to always let that paint dry. And there, there's a hard edge onto there, but no problem. You know, we can always fix that by getting the same, that our same darker shadow color there. I'm just gonna make another mixture of like that, kind of like that two to one. And then, um, pull it over. And to make it even bigger, I can always pull it this way too, so. And go back with an even brighter highlight because uh, it's fun. <laughs> I'm not very good with backhand strokes, but you're seeing me do it anyway. being like nitpicky. And with like there for like 90%, um, you know, you got the whole sketch of the area down with a pretty good gradient. You get to see, you know, you can faintly see some steps, but of course, you know, I'm just letting you know, you are looking at through this camera through like, 105 millimeter <laughs> equivalent so it appears a lot larger when you have this in the hand you can barely see it um, this would be more than acceptable for like anything on your tabletop it'd be like that'd be fantastic for tabletop quality um, when you get to the cure heroes and characters now it's just a matter of just getting like now you can just start going to doing like some actual glazing and just you know glaze away onto here so i can even take like this uh, mid-tone color, I'll make it into a glaze on the palette so you can kind of see. <laughs> it's just like a little bit of color on the palette here. So I'll make a glaze, remove the charge off to here. And then this is just in the mid-tone, so I can just do something like this. brushing there um, a good little hint is like when I'm doing the glazes here is it really helps me since you can't really judge what it's gonna look like until it's dry all I'm looking at is the area that's being wet so you're looking at the shine of the surface and then that's where you know where your strokes are going see right there I can just see there's like a little bit of area that's not dry yet but once it's dry you get a pretty good like view on it and how it looks and then I can do the same thing with the highlight so I can grab like this, that highlight color. I'm just gonna turn it into like a faux glaze right there. Remove a lot of the charge. There's hardly any paint coming off this thing like that. There's not a lot of paint coming off of it. And then I'm just going to This is with that mid-tone, so I just grabbed some of that stuff in the mid-tone as well. Yeah, and from there, you know, that's, uh, that is, in a nutshell, um, how you can create another method on how to create some, uh, some blends that are actually, like, pretty solid. And, um, you know, a good way to, uh, a good way to build a model if you don't want to build it up from, uh, dark to light. Here we go, I'll just put some. <laughs> Can't help it. Yeah. 
And also the very good way about learning this way is you can also get comfortable with just painting on, you know, one side of a model, especially a lot of times you see in the videos, like I'll just paint like one side of the sword or one part of the side of the armor, and then you got to merge the other way. This uh, will also give you practice on how to, um, how to tie in areas as well, because sometimes on miniatures, um, you know, only one side is very accessible at a time. So you'll need to like paint the other side. But once you get comfortable with bridging, with this technique of bridging, um, you, when you get into those, uh, when you get into those areas, you'll have no problem at all to, uh, to, uh, uh, to tackle those issue, to tackle those parts of the problem or part of the model. You know, you'll just be kind of like cruising through. Here, I'm just making like pretty much like a glaze of black. <laughs> And I'm just gonna there we go and that's it so that's uh that's um another way to layer up paint just by um you know filling in the highlight filling in the shadow and then creating a bridge in the mid-tone and then um using our previous techniques uh, with like such as like glazing and we can also do in a little bit of the texture work that you found in the second foundations video of creating interesting scratches and textures where after you map out the you know we can map out the, the primary you know the highlight the shadow and then start filling the mid-tone in the mid-tone and stuff that's where we can start putting some interesting scratches or interesting brush pattern scratches as well as in the highlights as well and or in the shadows even and just start blending um, that way uh, or even to give you another pattern just to open up some more possibilities for you in terms of like how you want to approach your model um, sometimes it'll be more beneficial and a lot easier to paint the whole armor the miniature the, your shadow color so you'd paint the whole the whole model the whole part of the armor this dark blue that caspian blue mixed with black and then you'll go and start um, painting the highlights directly with the adriatic blue that brighter value and then make a half tone or a mid tone and then start bridging those things together um yeah but that's all for that's all for this foundations video today um if you really liked this video and you haven't already, um, you know, you can check me out at the uh, at the Pro Palette at my website, um, bbminiatures.com. Um, from there, you have access to all these other videos that I have in terms of like model series um, uh, miniatures where I take, uh, where I do, I break down the steps of how I painted uh, many miniatures on my site uh, from start to finish and they're broken up into parts. So sections. So you get to see different parts from like how to paint the armor N and M OSL and, uh, many more, uh, and then through models from like age of Sigmar and, uh, all the way up to like the horse heresy. Um, thanks again for joining me and, uh, yeah, I'd like to see your progress and, uh, post up your, uh, post up your progress and stuff on the discord. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.